Okay, comparison with different scales. Let's go back to our New England Journal of Medicine. I showed you just one of these before, but the way it was done, we have men and women, one on top of the other, which invites comparison of men and women. But look carefully, the women go from 0.6 to 2.2, the men go from 0.6 to 2.8, that's different. Now I want you to look at the distance between 0.6 and 0.8 on the bottom and the top. It's much bigger on the bottom than it is on the top. You can't compare those two when their scales are different. You get a distorted comparison. Well, there it was the scales that were inconsistent. Here, it's the color. On the left, 2010 is green. The other years are sort of cyan. Uh, if we go to the right, it's 2012 that's green. 2010 is the cyan. So we've changed what the colors represent from the left to the right. Another one, here are two pie charts. And if we look at online on the right, it's green. If we go to green on the left, it's something different and online is gray. So if you look at one of the labels, you say, oh, green means, it doesn't mean that on the other. Here's a different sociology textbook. And we see that each bar is a different color. There's absolutely no need to make each bar a different color, unless, for example, you're interested in a particular country. Um, in this book, lots of the examples have countries. And um, so, for example, suppose I'm interested in Sweden. I look on the left and it's gold. I come to the right, I don't see gold. But wait, here's Sweden, it's purple here. If you're gonna use colors, have a meaning for them. Would you think of writing sentences with each word a different color? Then why make each number a different color? Why not show the same respect for numbers that we show for words? Mm -hmm.